hyponatremia is a condition where the concentration of sodium in the blood is too high. The normal range is between 135 and 145 milliequivalents per litre. Hyponatremia is rarer than hyponatremia and carries a higher mortality, even as high as 40 to 60 percent. The causes come down to either an increase in the sodium content or a loss of hypoosmolar fluids. The mnemonic model can help you remember them. M stands for medications or meals, O for osmotic diuresis, D for diabetes insipidus, E for excessive water losses, including GI losses, and L is for low water intake. The clinical features primarily arise when the change is acute. Therefore, because of a higher concentration outside the cells, water will move from the intracellular space to the extracellular space, causing the cells to shrivel and shrink. This happens in particular in the CNS, causing lethargy, weakness, coma, and even hemorrhage. Muscle cells are also affected, leading to rhabdomyolysis. Other features to look out for include polyuria, nausea and diarrhea, and orthostatic hypotension. So when we see a patient with hyponatremia, we must then assess the volume status of the patient, done by looking at things like the mucous membranes, skin turgor, blood pressure, and looking at the compressibility of the inferior vena cava via ultrasound. If the patient is hypovolemic, it means the total body water has decreased more than the body sodium, resulting in a higher concentration of sodium in the blood. This can be divided into renal and extra-renal causes by looking at the urinary sodium concentration. If it is low, then we know the kidneys are functioning properly and are reabsorbing sodium. As we would expect in a hypovolemic patient, with activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. These include GI losses and dermal losses. Renal losses would have a higher urinary concentration of sodium, and causes include acute kidney injury, chronic kidney disease, and diuretics. Treatment for hypernatremia must always be done slowly, no more than 10 milliequivalents per day. Here, the therapy includes isotonic saline, or if the hyponatremia is too high, glucose solution. Euvolemic patients have a slightly decreased total body water, but their sodium content is normal. Once again, this causes the concentration of sodium to rise. At this point, we would check the urine osmolality to plasma osmolality ratio. If it is above 1, indicating the urine is more concentrated than the plasma, then we may conclude that we have an extra renal cause. If, however, the ratio is less than one, then it may be renal in nature and we would likely then be looking at central or nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which are distinguished from each other by giving desmopressin, an antidiuretic hormone analogue. Treatment involves treating diabetes insipidus either by giving desmopressin in the central form or by giving thiazide diuretics as they excrete more water than sodium, as well as salt restriction in the nephrogenic form. Hypotonic saline may also be used in euvolemic hypernatremia patients. In patients who are hypervolemic, the total body water has increased somewhat, but the total amount of sodium has increased by more. This is mostly due to infusion with hypertonic saline solution, ingestion of sodium, hyperaldosteronism, or following administration of sodium bicarbonate as an emergency. Treatment includes decreasing the extracellular fluid with diuretics, giving hypotonic fluids to correct the sodium concentration, and potentially dialysis in chronic kidney disease patients.